Welcome, everyone. We're glad to see all of you. We love when people come to, to hear our agenda and what's going on. So before we get started, we're going to introduce ourselves. If we can start down here. Leslie Hervey, I'm interim clerk. Alicia Rees, Vice President of the Hamilton County Commission Board. Good afternoon, I'm County Commissioner Denise Driehaus. Jeff Aluto, County Administrator. And I am Stephanie Summerall Dumas, the President of the Hamilton County Board of Commission. So welcome everyone. Um, we're going to get started as we always do with a silent prayer and then after which you can please stand and I'm, uh, for the silent prayer, I would ask um, that we continue to pray for the numbers, the COVID numbers to go down. They're going down right now. So continue to pray for that. Of course, we will pray for our Bengals, that they play hard with no injuries and that they bring the hardware home back home to us. So if you could take a moment of silence. Amen. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. We have some presentations today, and um, we're going to. Uh, um, deal with our Bengals presentations first because, uh, come on in, uh, because we are hoping that we may have be, um, someone will call in from Los Angeles. We were trying to do a little small wager with them, uh, and I know they're not afraid to call in, but uh, so we have a visitor here. If you can come on in, Tiger, and we'll <laughs> So let me make it clear that uh, this is not who day because he's busy going to Los Angeles. This is when day, W H E N day. And um, he's when day because when we win, uh, he's the one that's going to bring us a celebration. So thank you so much for coming. He'll stick around the whole time. And so we certainly appreciate it. You, he is a volunteer staff person, and we, uh, uh, he's really the tiger, but uh, you know. okay, I'm telling it all like Christmas. So thank you so much for coming. And um, I'm going to move forward, but we need to make a motion to approve the minutes of the previous session. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reeves? Yes. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Thank you so much. I wonder, can I read it with my glasses on like this? So we have a proclamation for the Super Bowl. I can't see it like that. And I'm going to get started, and then each one of my colleagues have a part to play. Uh, this is a proclamation honoring the Cincinnati Bengals Super Bowl 56 appearance, whereas the Bengals franchise was added as an expansion team to the American Football League in 1968 with the promise of joining the NFL when the leagues merged in 1970, the team was co-founded in legendary Hall of Fame coach, Paul Brown, who led the Cleveland Browns to seven championships in the pre-Super Bowl era. And whereas Mr. Brown chose the name Bengals as a link to a local pro team called the Cincinnati Bengals that had played from 1937 to 1941. The original Bengals have been named by founder Hal Pennington after the Bengal stove in the mother's kitchen. And whereas, whereas the new Bengals played at the University of Cincinnati's Nipper Stadium until Riverfront Stadium shared with the Cincinnati Reds opened in 1970. In 2000, the Bengals began playing in their current home, Paul Brown Stadium. And whereas in 1981, the quarterback, Ken Anderson, had an MVP season leading the Bengals to their first Super Bowl appearance against the San Francisco 49ers. And whereas the Bengals took the football world by storm in 1988, 
with MVP quarterback Boomer Esiason, Icky Woods, and of course the Icky Woods Shuffle. Coach Sam White's, Sam White's no huddle offense and the SWAT team, Eric Thomas, called E.T. Thomas, David Fulcher, Lewis Billups, and Solomon Wilcox landed once again in the Super Bowl for a rematch against the 49ers. And whereas it's a new day, DEY, in Cincinnati under the leadership of Coach Zach Taylor, quarterback Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, Joe Mixon, C.J. Uzaba, Trey Hendrickson, Jesse Bates, Von Bell, and clutch rookie kicker Evan McPherson and many other valued players who make up this great team are leading the Bengals to Super Bowl in LA. And whereas the world will witness what we've known all along, you can never count out the Bengals. Throughout the season, the team has shown us the power of hard work, dedication, and commitment. And whereas Hamilton County is behind you all the way from Cincinnati to LA, from Coleraine to Anderson, our porch lights are orange, our bars and restaurants are filled with dedicated fans. Our churches, community organizations, and storefronts are proudly showing their stripes. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed, Hamilton County Board of Commissioners thanks the Cincinnati Bengals for uniting our community and giving us a much needed morale boost during these turbulent times and wishes them great success in Super Bowl 56. Now, therefore, be it further proclaimed that the Board of Commissioners of Hamilton County, Ohio, does hereby proclaim the 13th day of February, 2022, is recognized as Cincinnati Bengals Day, D-E-Y, in all of the Hamilton County by the order of all of our commissioners signed by all of us. So let's give them a hand. all that we received for the county and on your way out if you think maybe you need to rub it to give them some some uh, good luck or something we'll have it up here after the meeting and uh we know we'll have another one coming very soon and you can rub that one too so okay we'll move right along uh, madam president uh-huh uh are we taking all the bingo items because we have another, I have a uh, buy leaf with a bingo item. Uh, we'll, we'll go through with uh, the order of the agenda, okay? Um, and the next order of, of the agenda is Black History Proclamations. And you guys should have that because we're all going to read that together also. Um, and this is a proclamation recognizing February is Black History in African American History Month in Hamilton County. Um, and we'll read through this and you can find out the origin of us celebrating this. It's such important um, month in Black history. And as I said, it's in our proclamation, but Black history is American history. So let's get started. Whereas the Hamilton County Commissioners recognize February as Black History Month, also known as African American History Month, and that this month be a time to better understand the contributions made by African-Americans to the United States of America. And whereas recognizing the dearth of information on the accomplishments of Blacks in 1915, Dr. Carter G. Woodson founded the Association of the Study of Negro Life and History, now called the Association for the Study of African-American Life and History. Whereas under Dr. Woodson's pioneering leadership, the association created research and publication outlets for black scholars with the establishment of the Journal of Negro History in 1916 and the Negro History Bulletin in 1937, which garners a popular public appeal. And whereas in 1926, Dr. Woodson initiated the celebration of Negro History Week, which corresponded with the birthdays of Frederick Douglass and Abraham Lincoln. And whereas in 1976, this celebration was expanded to include the entire month of February. And today, Black History Month garners support throughout the country as people of all ethnic and social backgrounds discuss the Black experience. And whereas this month is also a time for all Hamilton County residents to celebrate the heritage of our African-Americans which reside within the county and within the state of Ohio. 
whereas black history is American history. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that for the fourth year in a row, the Hamlin County Board of Commissioners recognized February the 1st through February the 28th, 2022, as Black History and African American History Month in Hamilton County. Be it further proclaimed that Jamal Boyd, former Mayor Charles Johnson, Carolyn Jones, Fannie Mallory, Gina Ruffin Moore, retired Judge Fanon Rucker, Margot Spence, and Carl Westmoreland are being honored for their service to citizens of Hamilton County as part of our Black History Month recognition by the order of the Board of County Commissioners signed by all of us. So let's. And I just want to say that um, our next meeting, as we continue to um, celebrate Black History Month, I will bring up some of the uh, Black inventors. And you would not imagine, some of you already know you have good history on it. Some of the inventions that were done by our African American um, men and women that were coming up, and we would not even be here if they did not invent some of the things that I will be talking about on the uh, next meeting. So let's move forward. We're going to, I don't want to hold them for long. And um, we will start with our recognition. And let's see, I'll go with, uh, and then we'll rotate if it's okay. So um, the first uh, honoree is Carolyn Jones. And you're welcome to come up to the podium because we're going to uh, have everyone, you know, say something, one or two words, one or two words. That would be our, I'm great. Yeah. <laughs> one or two sentences. So thank you so much. So, okay. Um, right up there would be good. So a proclamation recognizing Carolyn Jones for her contributions in Hamilton County. Whereas the Hamilton County Commissioners recognized February as Black History Month, also known as African American History Month, a time to recognize and celebrate the contributions made by African Americans in the United States of America. Whereas Carolyn Jones was born and raised in Cincinnati, the daughter of a working class parents who did not graduate high school. She currently calls the College Hill neighborhood home. And whereas Ms. Jones and her brother learned the value of good education and the benefit of a strong work ethic. A proud product of Cincinnati Public Schools, Hughes High School, Carolyn went on to receive her undergraduate degree in social work in 1975 and her graduate degree in rehabilitation counseling in 1990, both from the University of Cincinnati. And whereas Carolyn served on the North College Hill City School District Board from 2006 to 2014, she was elected to Cincinnati Public School Board in 2015 and has served as president in 2018 2020 and 21, currently serves as vice president. And whereas Carolyn was appointed by her board colleagues to represent Cincinnati Public Schools on the Ohio School Board Association, Board of Trustees, where if she is entrusted to lend guidance and make decisions that impact students across the state of Ohio. And whereas Carolyn's professional career spans over 40 years of service in both the private and public sector of mental health service delivery, she retired from the Hamilton County Mental Health and Recovery Services Board, focused on improving the quality of life for adults and children with persistent mental illness. Jones' experience has encompassed provision of direct services, program management, system planning, and coordination. Whereas over her 28 years, her greatest achievement as a mental health professional occurred as a project director for a $9 million federally funded grant to transform the system of care for transition age youth and young adults with serious emotional disturbance and multi-system needs. This program was implemented successfully and continues to be fully sustained as a value component of the public mental health system. And whereas Carolyn is still an avid fan of the sport of fast pitch softball, having played competitive softball for 25 years and has spent more than 10 years coaching and instructing girls at beginner levels through high school, believing that it takes a village to raise a child. It is through involvement with her sport that she was able to help these young ladies learn the skills, 
the strength of purpose, passion, and persistence. Whereas Carolyn is dedicated to ensuring that every child has equitable opportunity to achieve success in education as they move beyond their high school years, she is very proud of the collective efforts of the Cincinnati Public Schools Board of Education to achieve excellence. Now, therefore, and we didn't put it all in either, guys, just to let you know. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed, Hamilton County Board of Commissioners honors Carolyn Jones for her contributions to the betterment of the citizens of Hamilton County. Now, therefore, be it further proclaimed that the Board of Commissioners of Hamilton County does hereby proclaim that the 11th day of February, 2022, is recognized as Carolyn Jones Day in all of Hamilton County and is signed by all our commissioners. A few words. Thank you so much um, to all the commissioners. I, I am so humbled almost to the point of tears. Mm -hmm. Never thought that I would be standing here receiving an award. I do what I do because I love what I do. And I've been doing this since I was 16 years old. Mm. when I was hired to be a tot lot aide downtown in the West End. <laughs> so every phase of my life, I have committed myself either through paid employment or volunteer work to making sure that the lives of our kids become paramount of paramount importance to everyone. And I am very excited about where we are with the district, all the gray hair that I got, I've gotten <laughs> over the past couple of years, but I always keep this in the forefront of my mind. And that is I do what I do because I love children mm -hmm. and I want the best quality life for them. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate the honor and the recognition. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So what we're gonna do for all the honorees, we'll give you your a proclamation. And then if you can stay to the end, we'll do a group picture with everyone. And also since on our agenda, we do have public comments and I see that your son called in. He's on Zoom and he wanted to congratulate his mom. It's well deserved, so I thought I would say that. So, um, so we'll um, move on to our next honoree. Our next honoree is Carl Westmoreland. Whereas Carl and his son is here, Guy Westmoreland. And I think Mr. They got, we have a picture of him. Um, he couldn't be with us uh, today. He's um, in rehab facility, uh, but he is listening to us. So whereas Carl B. Westmoreland is an American community organizer, preservationist, and senior historian at the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center. In 1967, he was one of the founding members of the Mount Auburn Good Housing Foundation with money provided by private donations. The purpose of the Mount Auburn Good Housing Foundation was partly in response to the rampant crime and housing absentee landlords and no influence within City Hall. And one of the best ways to improve these circumstances was to help more young people by helping them find a decent place to live and getting them jobs. And whereas in addition to serving African-American communities throughout Cincinnati, he would go on to become the first African-American to serve on the National Trust for Historic Preservation. Wes Merlin is currently senior historian and founding staff person of the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center in Cincinnati. His work there has included researching the history of the internal slave trade and the historic role that class, gender, race, and slavery have, pay, have played on contemporary political, social, and economic issues. Whereas Carl B. Westmoreland has served as an editorial writer for a major newspaper, reviewed books for major publishers, and lectured at major American universities. A major focus of his civil work has been bringing attention to the leaders of all races the cross-cultural importance of the physical preservation of to the African-American church. Westmoreland served as the keynote speaker at the 36th bombing of the 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama, 
and successfully lobbied the National Trust for Historic Preservation in the mid 1990s to declare black churches an endangered American historic resource. He also served as the keynote speaker at the 36th anniversary of the 16th Street Baptist Church bombing in Birmingham, Alabama and successfully continued to lobby those efforts. He is also very proud to be from Lincoln Heights, Ohio. Now therefore be it proclaimed that the Board of County Commissioners hereby recognize and celebrate the contributions of Carl B. Westmoreland to foster an inclusive environment for growth and opportunity in our community. And the Board of County Commissioners of Hamilton County, Ohio does hereby proclaim Wednesday, February 16th, 2022, Carl B. Westmoreland Day. Might add that was just the cliff notes <laughs> of his life. I know he's listening. He'll say, "Wait a minute, you guys, more research." That was just the cliff notes version. <laughs> oh, yeah. I thank you so much uh, to the county uh, commissioner Reese, Commissioner Sumero Dumas, Commissioner Driehaus, uh, Mr. Aludo, um, and to the entire county. We proud Hamilton County residents, lifelong. Um, Dad would love to be here. Uh, like I say, he's he's not well, uh, but he's fighting to get well. And uh, but it's an extreme honor to be here uh, to represent uh, Dad and uh, the Westmoreland family. So thank you all again. Uh, and I apologize for not being in my orange and black. It's, <laughs> I feel a little bad about that because oh, I'm and a we won't hold it against you because you're usually yeah. in orange and black for Withrow. I already know I'm a, I'm a diehard. <laughs> Bingo fan, and I am a Withrow Tiger. So, mm -hmm. thank you so much. Thank you. We will move on, Commissioner Driehaus. So, uh, it is my honor to bring forward Margot Spence. Who, by the way, is in the orange and black. <laughs> nice mask, Margot. Thank you. I had to go all the way to. San Diego to get the Oh, mask. nice. <laughs> looking good, looking good. Um, so this recognition, uh, I am honored to recognize Margo. Uh, whereas Margo Spence is the president and CEO of First Step Home, a residential substance abuse and mental health treatment agency for women and children. And whereas Ms. Spence has served First Step Home's mission to empower women and strengthen families for over 20 years. And whereas prior to her work at First Step Home, Ms. Spence worked for 14 years at the Talbert House using her education and credentials as a licensed social worker and chemical dependency counselor to help her clients overcome complex challenges. And whereas Ms. Spence has held various leadership roles in local and state organizations over the past 40 years, including the Ohio Women's Network, the Human Services Chamber of Hamilton County, the Leadership Council of Nonprofits, the Mental Health and Addiction Advocacy Coalition, in the Ohio Council of Behavioral Health and Family Services Providers. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Board of County Commissioners does hereby proclaim the 17th day of February, 2022, as Margo Spence Day in all of Hamilton County. Let, let me just say, Margo is, I, I, I'm nominating Margo because her, her intense dedication to women and children who have significant challenges in this community. And you have been the model for other agencies. I know this from personal experience, having been a state rep, people came here to look at First Step Home so they could model what you are doing to help individuals in their communities. So it is just a pleasure uh, to have you here today. Thank you so much, Commissioner Driehaus. Uh, you mean a great deal to me and to First Step Home and our community. Good afternoon. Madam Good President, afternoon. County Commissioners, officials, and guests, thank you so much for the opportunity to accept this proclamation in recognition of Black History Month. As a behavioral health provider in this community, I am grateful for the national theme this year is Black Health, Black Wellness. It is my desire, however, that the theme of Black health, Black wellness is more than just a theme for this month, but a true focus 
for our community, our country moving forward, for policymakers, providers, and those that engage with the Black community, equality, equity, quality, fairness have to be the foundation of interactions and decisions. I am honored to accept this proclamation and I look forward to the continued work to make sure all in our community are valued and can trust being treated regardless of culture, physical differences or other differences. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we will move on. A proclamation recognizing Fanon Rucker for his contribution in Hamilton County. If he could come forward. The Hamilton County Commissioners recognize February as Black History Month, known as African American History Month. And whereas retired Judge Fanon A. Rucker, I'll find out what that A stands for, <laughs> was born and raised in Gary, Indiana. His parents, Robert Dennis Rucker Jr., served on the Indiana Supreme Court for 18 years, and his mother, Jacqueline Pace Rucker, is a lawyer and Lutheran minister. And whereas Judge Rucker graduated from Hampton University and the University of Cincinnati College of Law, whereas a prosecutor, Judge Rucker, tried hundreds of bench and jury trials and regularly advocated for domestic violence and assault victims, Whereas Judge Rucker was part of the city's liquor license enforcement team, responsible for monitoring and where appropriate, objecting to liquor license renewal for non-compliant establishments. Whereas after several years as a city prosecutor, Judge Rucker went into private practice. In private practice, he worked for two different prestigious Cincinnati law firms where he focused primarily on civil rights, employment, municipal law and business litigation. Judge Rucker litigated cases in state and federal court at both the trial and appellate levels. Judge Rucker had the unique experience of representing both plaintiffs and defendants in court. As a lawyer, Judge Rucker received compensation for injured plaintiffs in solo and class action lawsuits. And whereas in 2007, Judge Rucker was appointed to the Hamlin County Municipal Court as judge he presided over more than 200,000, 200,000 cases. A lot of crime around. Yeah, no, I read this, but <laughs> including several hundred civil and criminal bench and jury trials. Whereas Judge Rucker authorized more than 400 written decisions and regularly appeared on local and national news discussing relevant legal issues and high profile cases. Judge Rucker served as an adjunct professor at the University of Cincinnati for several years, where he taught a class on law history and currently serves as on Ohio Bar Examiner. And whereas in September 2019, with an impeccable record of over 20 years of service, Judge Rucker joined the prestigious Cochran firm, Ohio. And whereas Judge Fanon Rucker was appointed the clerk of courts in Hamilton County, Ohio, on December the 21st, 2021, which made him the first African-American to serve in that position. Now, therefore be it proclaimed, Hamilton County Board of Commissioners honors Judge Fanon Rucker for his contributions to the betterment of our citizens of Hamilton County. Now, therefore be it further proclaimed that the Board of Commissioners of Hamilton County does hereby proclaim that the 12th of February, 2022, is recognized as Judge for non Record Day in all of Hamilton County. Congratulations. Madam President, um, Commissioner Reese, Commissioner Driehaus, um, citizens of Hamilton County, I am extremely uh, humbled and honored by this recognition. Um, I know when I first got the call, I questioned uh, whether or not the call came to the right number, uh, whether the email was sent to the right address for me being honored for Black history. Um, but I, I truly do appreciate it. Um, it, it. One thing that was mentioned in, in the uh, resolution was really an expression of my love for history. Mm -hmm. I know I don't do anything that I do without those who came before me. 
um, not only my parents, but so many of those who never met me, never had any obligation towards me or us at any point in the past, but did it so that our lives would be better. And so I teach history. And one of the things that I just want to point out, we talk about Black History Month, and I remember being an elementary school child sitting in there and seeing all those posters on the wall when I was growing up in Gary, and Black History Month was something that we used to have programs about and be mm -hmm. talked about in a big way, but it was never intended to be just for Black folks. Mm -hmm. Black History Month was created by President Ford, and every single president from President Ford until today, except one, annually expressed the requirement that our entire country take the time to study Black history because it's American history. I'm going to sit down, but I just want to offer these words from one of our presidents. It not only offers Black Americans an occasion to explore their heritage, but it also offers all Americans an occasion and opportunity to gain a fuller perspective of the contributions of Black Americans to our nation. The American experience and character can never be fully grasped until the knowledge of black history assumes its rightful place in our schools and our scholarship. Mm -hmm. That was actually uttered 36 years ago by President Ronald Reagan. Mm -hmm. Every single president recognizes that this is about the entirety of our country. Mm -hmm. And so again, I appreciate and I'm humbled by this honor and I'm grateful to Hamilton County for having accepted me and adopted me over these years. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Our next honoree is Fanny Mallory. Where, yes. Always stylish. <laughs> Whereas Fanny Mallory is a native of Cincinnati. Her father, Melvin F. Harden, was a Methodist minister and owner of several funeral homes in Cincinnati. She attended the Ohio State University and Central State University, where she met her sweetheart, her husband, William F. Mallory Sr., who would later become a state representative and majority floor leader of the Ohio House. They married in 1955 and they raised six children in the West End. She is a consummate supporter and advisor to her children. She is very family oriented and is a family historian and a genealogical research, researcher. And whereas she is one of the pioneers of Montessori education here in Cincinnati's urban area and served for years as a teaching assistant. She also taught adult literacy as part of the Mallory Learning Seeds program spearheaded by her late husband. The program taught adults how to teach others to read. As an avid historic preservationist, she volunteered as an interpreter at the Hawk House Museum on Dayton Street in the West End. Whereas though her husband and five of her six children have been elected to public office, most people don't know of her political activism and involvement. During a bus strike in the 1960s, she drove people to work as part of an effort to keep pressure on decision makers to resolve the issue. She was a change maker. Over the last seven decades, Mrs. Mallory has been a poll worker, thank you, passed out political literature, registered people to vote, thank you, organized honking waves, made calls at phone banks, raised money for candidates, and managed absentee ballot programs. She also served as the treasurer for several political campaigns. She wrote radio ads, was a copy editor for political literature, and helped design the Mallory logo that is still in use today. Whereas Mrs. Mallory is an advocate and supporter of the arts. She has designed and created women's and children apparel. And she recently earned a certificate in interior design. She is active in her church, York Street United Methodist Church, has uh, mentored neighborhood children, and she loves to travel. 
She is the proud matriarch of a prolific family dedicated to public service. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Board of County Commissioners does recognize and celebrate the contributions of Fannie Mallory to foster an inclusive environment for growth and opportunity in our community and the Board of County Commission of Hamilton County, Ohio does hereby proclaim Tuesday, February 15th, 2022, Fannie Mallory Day in all of Hamilton County. <laughs> And before she uh, speaks, she has been known as the, the mama of Cincinnati, the mama of Hamilton County. Uh, her, uh, some of her family is here that I do want to make sure we recognize. Former Cincinnati mayor, first African-American directly elected mayor, Mark Mallory is here. Hamilton, yes. Hamilton County Judge Dwayne Mallory is here. Former Ohio State Representative Dale Mallory is here. And member of the Hamilton County Board of Elections and president of the Cincinnati NAACP, Joe Mallory is here. Put in her bodyguards. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Hamilton County Commissioners, for this. Honoring, I never expected to be honored anywhere by anyone. I thank God first, and I thank you. And I thank my children because they listened to my advice, adhered to my rules, and became productive citizens as I asked them to. And they, asked, they passed that on to their own children too. And I thank all the people of Cincinnati who have been so supportive of the Mallory's over the years. Thank you, mm. thank you, thank you. Mm. <laughs> there you go, great. So we'll move Commissioner Drew here. It's my honor to bring forward Jamal Boyd. Looking good, Jamal. Uh, whereas Jamal Boyd Sr. is the Chief Executive Officer of the Crossroads Center, an award-winning nationally recognized behavioral and mental health substance use and addiction treatment agency serving the Cincinnati region. And whereas under Mr. Boyd's tenure, the Crossroads Center has been named one of the top addiction treatment centers in the county by Newsweek. And whereas Mr. Boyd has been in the healthcare industry for more than 27 years with a focus on serving underserved populations with a concerted focus on diversity and inclusion. And whereas prior to his position at the Crossroads Center, Mr. Boyd served as the Director of Diversity, Inclusion and Language Services for TriHealth, playing a vital role in the health system's effort to strengthen its supplier diversity strategy and whereas Mr. Boyd is a devoted volunteer serving on the boards of the Salvation Army of Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky, Ohio Alliance of Recovery Providers, the Ohio Alliance to End Sexual Violence, and is chairman of the Board of Recovery Link. His previous volunteer experience includes past president of the National Association of Health Service Executives, Delaware Valley Chapter Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Lincoln Heights Missionary Baptist Church, and board member for the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center, the Family Nurturing Center, and the Healthcare Connection, a federally qualified health center in Cincinnati. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Board of County Commissioners does hereby proclaim the 18th of February, 2022, is Jamal C. Boyd Senior Day in all of Hamilton County. Just briefly, yeah. let me say that you, uh, Jamal, has brought uh, an intellect and an energy and a commitment to, again, helping individuals that have challenges in this community uh, in a way that, that you're like a magnet. I mean, it just brings people to you. And, um, 
you know, people are benefiting every day from the work that you and your team are doing in this community. So thank you for your work. Well, thank you, first of all, to God be the glory for the opportunity to be acknowledged um, for the things that we do, that he gives us the energy to do. To all of the commissioners, Commissioner Driehaus, whom we've worked together on a number of the, uh, things here in the county and abroad, and Jeff and many others uh, to try and change and impact lives. And I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, Madam Chair and, and the commission and the administration for just being recognized. And I didn't prepare any words or anything, but just from my heart, I'd like to say a, a couple things that come to mind. Uh, it's a phrase, I believe it's a Latin phrase, uh, memento mori, which means remember that we shall all die. And that is a sense of urgency for serving and for service. And with that said, that makes our accountability to serve God's purpose for our lives every day to help somebody because that's what he's put us here for. That's what our purpose is and that's what our drive and motivation should be. And with the work that we do in touching the, not just the African-American community, which is my passion, to, but all of those who are underserved, underrepresented and marginalized. And then the work that we do, we should every day have that as our sense of urgent priority to make sure that if we, if we can touch one, we've accomplished a major goal. And there are so many more of those ones out there that need what we do. While we are in these seats of influence and power and decision-making, we should make that our primary focus to get past bureaucracy, red tape, and anything that stands in the way of helping those who need what we do. And that is my commitment. I've been in Cincinnati for almost nine years. I'm a Philadelphia native, but since I've hit the ground, that has been my focus. And that was my focus before I was even uh, moved here to serve at the organizations that I've had the, the, the blessing to serve. And again, to God be the glory for everything that he's put me in a position to do. And every breath that I breathe is dedicated to serving him. But as I serve him, my goal is to reach people. And if we can partner together, those of you in the room to get that done, let's do it. I am a person of action and not words. I don't do stuff to have a white paper, right, Jeff, to sit on somebody's desk. But I really try to make sure that things happen at the end of the day so that when I go to sleep, I know that at least one person that I've touched has gotten something that they need to have a better life and an opportunity. So thank you. And Great. God bless. much. And I have one additional proclamation for Gina Ruffin Moore. Whereas Gina Ruffin Moore is an organizational development specialist and a learning and middle management for the city of Cincinnati. And whereas she has more than 20 years of experience as a trainer, public relations strategist, news reporter, radio news director, former television news writer, news producer, and author of the Cincinnati Charleston. This is it right here. This is, this is it right here, yeah. Let me hold it up better. So, um, um, Charleston, South Carolina, Arcadia, publishing in 2007. And whereas Gina has served as an associate public information officer for the University of Cincinnati and Cincinnati Public Schools, and where she earned a bachelor's of science degree in journalism from the Ohio University. I guess I should say the, no, that's the Ohio State. No, we're at the, no, other, we're the, the other, other one, yeah. <laughs> and a master of science, I apologize. That's all right. <laughs> uh, and human resources development and training from Xavier University. And where as a freelance writer and author of two teacher's guides on black history, she has a longstanding passion for local history. She acquired the vintage images in her book from archives, libraries, and private collections. And whereas Moore is a longtime resident of Cincinnati and is active in her community, where she has served as a Woodlawn Village Council member and a member of Mount Zion Baptist Church of Woodlawn. And whereas Gina is a recipient of the Nefertiti Award from the Cincinnati Herald Magazine, Gina is also a member of the Order of Easter Stars, Wesley Smith Chapter, and the Miami Valley African American Historical Society. And whereas Gina has been married to Russell Moore for more than 30 years, they are the parents of Jennifer Moore, WCPO TV news producer, and Victor Moore, aviation engineering senior at Ohio University. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed, 
Hamilton County Board of Commissioners honors Gina Ruffin Moore for her contributions to the betterment of the citizens of Hamilton County. Now, therefore, be it further proclaimed that the Board of Commissioners of Hamilton County does hereby proclaim that the 14th day of February 2022 is recognized as Gina Ruffin Day. Congratulations. Wow. The word thank you doesn't seem to be quite enough, but that's the word I'm going to choose and giving, uh, you know, protocol to you, uh, Commissioner uh, Dumas, and also Commissioner Reese and Commissioner Driehaus, I thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad to be among the number of these other fabulous people. And I want to thank you and also reiterate, as someone else had already stated, I stand on the shoulders of people who were waiters, maids, and chauffeurs. And because of the hard work and dedication they had, that is why me and many of us are here where we are today. And uh, I may as well warn my husband, um, I'm gonna be doing my happy dance. As soon as I get to the car, I might do it while I'm here, but uh, I'm smiling from ear to ear. And uh, thank you very much for the recognition. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Reese. Commissioner Reese. That was it for you. Okay. You have one more? Okay. I do have one more. I'm uh Chuck Johnson is here. Please come forward, Chuck. So this is a proclamation recognizing Charles H. Johnson, otherwise known as Chuck Johnson, for his contributions to Hamilton County, whereas Chuck Johnson served as the mayor of Forest Park, a position he held for 14 years, and whereas in addition to his position as mayor, Mr. Johnson served on the Forest Park City Council for 20 years, and whereas during his tenure, Forest Park grew to become the second largest city in Hamilton County and has remained one of its most diverse communities, and whereas outside of his work in Forest Park, Mr. Johnson served as a labor relations consultant for the Ohio Education Association from 1980 to 2010, and as a teacher in suburban St. Louis for 12 years, and whereas Mr. Johnson gives back to his community as a volunteer for the Red Cross and is an active member of the Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity, now therefore be it proclaimed, that the Board of County Commissioners does hereby proclaim the 19th day of February, 2022 is Charles H. Johnson Day in all of Hamilton County. I would say a word about Mayor Johnson, but we all know Mayor Johnson <laughs> well. Uh, your represent, rep reputation precedes you in this room, of course, because you did such a fine job of representing Forest Park in the years that so many of us have been in elected service as your partners. So thank you for coming today. Thank you. I want to thank you all for having honored me, uh, being placed among these great, fantastic people. It's truly an honor. Uh, I uh, once read somewhere that a race that has no history, has no tradition. Mm -hmm. Simply put, if we don't protect and teach our history, then there is no tradition to be had. Having said that, one of my goals and aims in life, and I don't know if I'll live long enough to get to see it happen, I live for the day when we don't have to put tags on mm -hmm. things. You know, black history, women's history, all of those histories are part of us. Mm -hmm. We should be teaching those things to our kids every single day. Every school should be required to do it. You know, I shouldn't have to look up here and say, there's a black commission or a female black commission or a female black commission or a female something, white commission. These people are commissioners. They are people. There shouldn't be any distinction made based on whether they're male, female, or what else, or what color they are. We need to get to that point where people are people are people. 
you know, my, my grandmother, one of the things she always taught me was take a look in the mirror because that whatever you see looking back at you, that's what you really are. And that's what you ought to want people to see. But then she also added, don't worry about what color it is that's looking back at you. Worry about what God sees also. Mm -hmm. Again, I want to thank you all for this. It's an honor, and I'm very, very appreciative. And to all of the other recipients, uh, I hope I could get to the point where you are, <laughs> become as famous as you are. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, those are the end, end of our uh, presentations, but what I'm going to do a couple things real quick, not going to hold you long. And I totally agree with the, what was said about history because I, could, I was, could not believe that Black history was not celebrated until I came and I started it. And it's like all of these fabulous people that do so much great work, not only here, but all over the world. As I said earlier, Black history is American history. And I also remember reading that if we don't remember our history, we're doomed to repeat it. And we know there are lots of things in our history, not just ours, in American history, that we do not want to repeat. So as we move forward and we grow, we will, as uh, Mayor Johnson has said, accept each other for who we are. So what I'm going to do before I pull uh, the honorees up, our next item on the agenda is public comments. And I just want to make sure Nobody uh, else wanted to make any comments about our uh, honorees. No, okay. So if our honorees could come forward, we're gonna take a, a quick picture, that would be great. Yeah, and then we'll go commissioners in the middle, and then we'll go right around the commissioner. And then if we could, we'll try to get around this pole. Jeez. Yeah, it does move. Oh, it does. Everybody look right here. That'd make a great picture if everybody looks at this one spot. Do that. Next spot. All right, and one more. So many. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay. A lot of buzz, buzz, buzz. Okay, we're gonna uh, go to our regular meeting. I love the energy, the positive energy. Thank you all for coming. That's for sure. You're welcome to stay if you'd like. So, um, oh, we lost our crowd. Yeah. So, but our okay. So our next order of business would be comments and motions by our commissioners. I, um, I don't have any comments that I wanna give at this time about, um, about what I've done during the week or whatever. We've been very busy, our office has, doing lots of important things for our residents. But I will um, move on to Commissioner Vice President Reese. Thank you, Madam President. Keeping with certainly the positive theme, and I just want to say that uh, Cincinnati is rocking. I want to thank everybody that has been organizing and moving together to make sure that this weekend, if you can't get to L.A., we've got something for you here. And uh, enjoyed uh, working with uh, the city and uh, Mayor Avtab and his team, along with our team, and certainly, you know, I uh, wanted to have that watch party. It would have been unbelievable. I've got people calling me still saying we were coming down, but I told them, come on down anyway, because we will have tailgating uh, at different locations. They're going to be tailgating uh, zones. We'll have tailgating on the banks. We'll have tailgating uh, as well for family uh, activity that will take place at Washington Park. There'll be a family zone. Uh, there'll be an opportunity at the... Uh, at uh, Fountain Square with ice skating and the boards there, uh, the, the big screen there. So there'll be about five different zones, uh, four of them being on our side of the river where people can enjoy. And then obviously there's uh, tons of restaurants and bars, but there's a lot of people who may not want to go to a bar. So uh, there are churches. In fact, uh, tomorrow I'll be kicking off a senior citizen um, who day watch uh, getting ready for the Super Bowl party with seniors at New Prospect Baptist Church. Uh, so I'm excited about that. So there's just so much. It's so much excitement out here everywhere you go. I mean, they got the earrings and nails and vendors and local stores and I mean, restaurants everywhere. And I hear that hotels are being booked. Uh, people are being able to uh, make reservations at um, various restaurants and those are getting booked. You know, it is Valentine's weekend. So I encourage you to get a room, come on down, book the rooms. Uh, this is a great opportunity for us, particularly at a very tough time in a pandemic. Our uh, occupancy rates at hotels have been down. This is a chance to get them up. And um, 
Yeah, I'm very excited about it. So we were able to pull all that together. I want to thank everybody that's been involved in that. Convention and Visitors Bureau, 3CDC, uh, Experience Cincinnati. Uh, had a chance to be on some of the Zoom calls with, with the, those groups to say, hey, how do we pull this together in a short amount of time? Uh, looking at potentially uh, the parade on Wednesday, potentially. Uh, so, uh, I'm, and I'm looking for a Super Bowl win. I'm, I'm, I've been pretty good with my predictions. I said for three weeks straight, we're going to win. And we did. And so I'm just really excited uh, about that. A lot of fans uh, going to the airport. Many have sent some pictures of the Cincinnati Black Music Walk of Fame because we're right there in the airport. And people have been saying that's been really cool. So the energy is hot. It's exciting. And uh, I do have a a resolution that I want to introduce and uh, putting some context with the resolution. Uh, this resolution. Is that the bylaw? Yes. Okay, we'll get to the bylaws after we do our reports. Oh, okay. I thought okay. you said motions and resolutions. By, I thought that's what it's comments, said. comments, okay. and then we go to the bylaws. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, I'll and be Jeff back. Does his stuff. Okay, okay. Thank you. Uh huh. You're welcome. And as we talk about the energy and the activities that are going on, if you go to hashtag who day OTR, there's like three or four pages of all the stuff that's going on. So. Uh, Commissioner Driehaus. Yeah, thank you. And I too will be brief. Um, thank you, Madam President, for once again, um, allowing us to all be involved in the Black History Month celebration. It is really, um, it's moving to see so many fabulous people in this community brought forward and celebrated um, as, as we have done in the past. So I thank you for that. Um, also, I, I, you know, as, as far as the Bengals uh, go, you know, we, I think we're all looking forward to that victory on Sunday. Um, I, I've been on a couple websites looking for all this. There is so much going on. Visit Cincy is one website where so many things have been collected. And so if people are still not certain what they're doing, and I don't know who those people are, but if they still exist, um, there are lots and lots of things on Visit Cincy, uh, both in the urban core and outside the core uh, where people can go and celebrate. Um, and lastly, I just want to remind um, the arts organizations we have put out that grant for arts organizations through our American Rescue Plan fund. And those the deadline for that is the 15th of February. So it's coming up. And so those folks should go to 513 Relief if there are arts organizations that suffered through the pandemic and need that assistance, um, they can go to 513 Relief by February 15th and um, apply for that assistance. Thank you. Thank you. Madam and we have Jeff. Can I, I'm sorry, I forgot uh, one thing to mention because uh -huh. I thought we were gonna go to the Bailey. I can't not not mention this. The pep rally that we had on Monday. Uh, I mean, you know, it was in the publicly funded Paul Brown Stadium. Uh, we thought, man, will anybody show up? 30,000 people showed up. And I want to thank the team that put it together because all of the things that we had brought up as potentials were answered. We did ticketing, we did festival seating, we didn't have any major incidents. Uh, we had private security, plus the sheriffs, plus the police, all there for safety. We had the concession stands opening, people were hugging, saying, thank you, I needed this for my charity to make additional money. And we got the greatest fans in America. In California, they only had 3,000 people show up. 30,000 fans showed up inside Paul Brown Stadium, free of charge, and it was just spectacular. So uh, we didn't get to do the watch party, but I got to see a blueprint of what it could have been. And I think that we did a fabulous job. The three of us were there. We were down there at this event. Um, and I don't know who wasn't there. It was everybody together and the restaurants. In fact, one of the people that was concerned about, well, what is it gonna do for the restaurant? I saw a tweet from that restaurant that said, thank you, this was phenomenal. You were in the stadium, but then people came out and had beers and ate. So it's just, again, we can do things, even if we've never done them before, it's time to look at those things. And I just wanna say that it was a phenomenal uh, partnership uh, with the Bengals, and Paul Brown Stadium, our, some of our staff was there. I saw Mr. Feller Camp down there, who's our county director of stadiums. And we showed the 30,000 people come out and it was cold, come out. And, you know, we charged $5 to park. So we made a little change in the parking garages we own. It was phenomenal. 
So I just wanted to, I don't want to gloss over that because that was, that is the kickoff to us winning this Super Bowl. So thank you. Thank everybody that helped put those pieces together. Thank you. And I just want to make it clear, we really didn't have anything to do with it. It was the NFL who planned it along with the Brown family and the Gatorade, Gatorade Corporation sponsored it. And uh, from what I heard, it took almost a year to get all of that together. And they always do that for whoever's running for uh, within the Super Bowl, but it did happen and it was great. Uh, but we didn't have anything to do with it as a county, but uh, we can look at doing something like that at, a, at another time. So um, Jeff Faludo, our county commissioner. Or, uh, or administrator, right? You gave me a promotion there, commissioner. Oh, I did, I did. <laughs> okay. Uh, so <laughs> thank you, Madam sure. President. Um, a couple of uh, by leave items, but first, just a couple of co uh, comments. Also, just want to um, also uh, wish the Bengals well this this weekend. I know we're all going to be watching the games. Extremely exciting time. Um, uh, so uh, to to all the to the team, the ownership, just want to wish them the best of luck. And, and on that same note, to Commissioner Reese's point, um, as we talk about the Bengals, also just want to take this as maybe a final time to uh, thank. Uh, the staff and team of the county uh, down at Paul Brown Stadium, who does this every day throughout the year. Uh, even when the when the team is not playing, the stadium's closed up. Joe Feldkamp and his team, uh, from the security staff to the groundskeepers to the building engineers, they're all down there and they're taking care of that stadium and make sure making sure that it's a, a jewel and an asset uh, for uh, for this community. So I just want to thank Joe and his team for. Uh, for, for all of their hard work throughout the year. Um, and on that note, just one final uh, comment also, as we're talking about facilities, uh, uh, we are a week removed from the major ice storm that came through uh, last week. Uh, and also, first of all, I wanna thank all the department heads, all the elected offices, the Board of County Commissioners um, for how seamless things work. And it's the first time in, in at least the history that I've been at the county uh, that we've ever had two days where we had to suspend operations in a row, uh, and it worked pretty seamlessly. And some of that was due to the fact that we probably got more notice on this storm than we typically ever receive. Uh, but nonetheless, from communication with the board to the department heads to the to the employees to other elected officials, uh, really it, with the sheriff, with snow emergencies, the county engineer. Uh, really seamless communication on this. So I just wanted to thank the board for your guidance on it, as well as everybody else uh, who played a role in that. And uh, thank uh, our staff uh, and leadership uh, over at the Department of County Facilities who had to deal, typically, they, they always do a great job clearing paths to the buildings and everything. And it's, uh, they get in here, even when those of us who can't get in, they are in here and they're clearing the the sidewalks, uh, putting the salt down and everything. They always do a fantastic job. And they had a, they had a big load this time with uh, all that ice that came down. So they, uh, mm -hmm. uh, was more difficult, but they did a great job again, making it safe for people to, uh, to travel and to, and to walk. So I wanted to thank them as well. Uh, and finally, uh, Madam President, I do have a couple of by leave items uh, in your packet. Um, uh, the first is by leave item number one. Uh, which is a resolution estab establishing policy direction for the Finley Market parking garage. This was a, uh, a resolution that Commissioner Driehaus had actually um, uh, 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 proposed, uh, I believe a week or so ago, maybe right before the snow, and it indicated that it would come forward. It's on the by leave agenda now. So uh, Commissioner Driehaus, I'll defer to you if there's an introduction that you wanted to make to this particular item. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Madam President. Um, so yes, this is a resolution giving firm policy direction related to the Finley Market Garage. Um, this is a community development agreement. We have had one of these for the current coroner's office and again for the West End Garage. And um, basically it is about securing local jobs, good paying jobs, jobs with some security, for uh, the projects that we are funding, uh, namely the Finley Market Garage. So it's about delivering the project on time and within budget, uh, which has happened in both cases uh, with the prior builds, um, increasing employment opportunities for our residents, providing um, opportunities for the underemployed and providing access to training and career development and ensuring that the work site is safe. Uh, we offer competitive wages and benefits 
and workplace protections on these jobs. And so that is the language written into the resolution. And so I obviously I'm supportive of this and would like to uh, make a motion in, knowing that there will be further comment, um, establishing this policy direction for the Finley Market Garage. Thank you. Any further discussion on bylaw one? No. no. Make your motion. I'll yeah. make the motion that we pass the resolution. Second. Uh, Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Thank you. Two. Thank you, Commissioners. Bylaw number two in your packet it relates to the a budget adjustment number five for federal emergency rental assistance. So this relates to our emergency rental assistance program. Uh, as the board is aware, we received two um, uh, tranches, if you will, of emergency rental assistance, uh, ERA-1 and ERA-2. Uh, the first round was, I believe, 16 million. The second round was 20 million. So in total, 36 million. This is not new money that we're talking about here. This is the same money, but we've just received it. And we actually received the money from the federal government in separate tranches uh, under ERA-2. Uh, we have now received another tranche in the, in the last tranche of 12.5 million. So this just allows us to appropriate those dollars so that they're there to get out to the, uh, to the public. This is, this is not new money or a new allocation or any new program. It's the same program we've been implementing through ERA 1 and 2. It's just appropriating the final dollars for that. The administration recommends approval. Thank you. Any further discussion? From the uh, I do uh, want to say, uh -huh. yeah, I just want to say, um, I know Director uh, Patton is here. And uh, I think this is obviously good news. Um, I, we had a 60 day, uh, I had asked us, how do we get a 60 day, get the backlog off of us? And a presentation was made, I think this week, or yeah, I think this, this week, last week. Um, and we're making progress on that. So this actually helps us to continue to help people. I just wanna put out there, it's still tough out here. It's not over, people are still struggling. So this is uh, very important, so. I just wanted to point that out. I think this is good news for us. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely great news for sure. Um, as you were saying, people are still suffering. I make a motion from the chair to adopt by leave two. Second. Commissioner Summer Jimenez. Yes. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Driehaus. Yes. Thank you. By leave three. Thank, thank you, Madam President. By leave number three is a uh, an item that Commissioner Reese brought up. I believe it was with the snowstorm, everything runs together. So I think it was this past Tuesday or, or the Tuesday prior to that, but I'll defer to Commissioner Reese for the introduction of Bileaf 3. Uh, thank you. Uh, Bileaf 3, uh, obviously we've talked about uh, the bingos and the excitement, the enthusiasm. Uh, we talked about the pep rally. Uh, I said our pep rally had 30,000 people and the same, I guess, NFL said you could do a pet rally in California. They only had 3,000 people. So it shows that there's a tremendous amount of enthusiasm, and so many people will be watching the Super Bowl. Uh, there are so many school districts that have said that they are, they're letting off their workers for the Monday after Super Bowl. We're playing on um, West Coast time. It'll be a late, tight, late game. We expect the win. It's going to be a lot of celebration. And um, our workers who have worked very hard in this pandemic, it's been a tough two years of working and uh, we've done overtime. And a lot of our workers was at the, the fan uh, event. They've got to work. Um, and so I have a resolution here asking to have Monday off as a paid holiday for our workers. I think they, they deserve it. I think they've earned it. I've seen a lot of our workers, even with the 513 Relief Bus, coming out on Saturdays. I've went to all of them. Now, our offices, we don't have to be here every day of the week. Um, but some people have to. And so I just think with the kids being at home, many of them school districts being out, this would be a great boost to the workers, a thank you to the workers, and a united front for our team. I know we've done a proclamation declaring the day on Sunday, and that's great. I know the Super Bowl declares that day. It is Super Bowl. Uh, but this would be a, a great opportunity uh, for, I think, our workers to be able to enjoy the game with their families, 
and uh, be able to have that holiday. So I'm presenting this resolution on behalf of the workers of Hamilton County and asking that we have that Monday off. I know that Wednesday is going to be uh, probably the parade, but that's just, you know, like opening day parade and people can make their uh, adjustments, if you will, on their lunch breaks or what have you. But that Monday, uh, and I just have a, a, a good feeling that Monday we're going to win and it would be great to have our uh, workers be able to be off that day and have a thank you for what you already did in this pandemic, being out here in this pandemic, keeping things going, staying late. I know I email Kevin Holt, somebody give me some eight o'clock at night. I email him. He get right back. I mean, let's take a break and celebrate. Uh, and so I'm asking that this resolution be considered. Uh, I'm supportive and obviously everybody has to make their own decision, but I think this would be a great thing for the workers of Hamilton County and supporting our team in a united way, consistent with many school boards who have already uh, declared that day off. Thank you. Um, just a couple points. Um, in behalf of not just the workers, but all the constituents in our whole county, 800 and almost 30,000, um, 823, I believe. Uh, I understand the passion. We're all passionate. We've been that way. People in the community have been that way. Uh, we have constantly and continually, continually uh, thanked our staff people. Uh, we've uh, did that through our hazard pay, people being out doing the COVID and, and making sure that we supplement them. Um, a lot of our staff were off on Thursday and Friday as we indicated because of the snowstorm. So a lot of them have already been off. Um, I look at it, I need to be fiscally responsible. And I asked Jeff to pull up the numbers. Uh, the employees under Hamilton County, the board of Hamilton County are approximately, well, they are 1,126 employees. And if we pay for eight hours on Monday, that would be $229,500 we would pay out of the taxpayers' money. Then if for some reason, if we decided, and the other um, entities un, uh, that are not under the board, like the auditor, the recorder, the sheriff's department, that's about 3,160 county employees, which would equal $799,190. So if they decided, the total amount that would be spent out of taxpayer money would, would be $1.028 million for people to be off on Monday. I think if people want to be off on Monday, they'll use your, their personal time, their vacation time. Um, and I don't think any department heads, I can't speak for all of them, would deny them wanting to be off for such an important event. Um, because of that, I am not uh, in a position uh, that I would support this resolution. I, I think that uh, we need to, as I was saying, uh, express our passion when we win this Super Bowl and that uh, if we need to take off or want to take off, that we can do that at, at that time. But I am not willing to justify spending that taxpayer money for that purpose. Um, Commissioner Driehaus. Thank you, Madam Commissioner. Um, I have thought about this and I appreciate the enthusiasm behind this resolution. Um, and I know it is intended to thank our employees and I too value the work of the employees um, all the time and effort that has gone forward, especially as Jeff noted um, during the snowstorm where we had the engineer's office, EMA, 911, the sheriff's office really working overtime to make sure that people stayed safe in our community. Um, but I am uh, concerned about the disruption to county services uh, with the day off. We've, we've just had two days off because of the snowstorm. We've got President's Day uh, coming where we'll have another day off. So I, I'm concerned about the continuity of services to the constituents. So I too am not in a position to support the resolution, uh, but appreciate the enthusiasm behind it um, and the, um, you know, the, the intent of celebrating the Super Bowl victory when it happens on Sunday. Thank you. Madam President. Thank, yes. I just wanted to go back because we throw this word around a lot, um, fiscally responsible. And the only thing I'm asking is that we use that as one set of rules. I don't look at it as fiscally responsible or irresponsible. I look at where do we want to put our investment? And at this board, when we, I mean, we got to 
to be honest now, there was a time when the Port Authority, who was lost a lawsuit for the Millennium Hotel. And I said, let's be fiscally responsible because the court said that we were not liable. We didn't have to pay their legal fees. I was the only one on this board who voted no. That amount was $660,000. And there was no mention of fiscal responsibility. I think it's a difference in opinion, which is fine. I don't think call it enthusiasm. I think it's a difference in where we stand. I'm standing with people, everyday people, and every time I bring something for everyday people, we can't do it, we can't do it, we can't do it. And then we even throw jabs at it. We can't do this. We can't do the watch party. And at the end of the day, the NFL did come back, but we can't do it. And then Monday we do a pep rally and we at the pep rally, we think it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. But a week before we said we couldn't do it because of ticketing and logistics and this. And believe me, there were some county workers working that day at that event. We said we didn't know if anybody would show up. 30,000 people show up. But then we come back and it's put on by not the people, but it's in the publicly funded stadium. We say it's a beautiful thing. Now we come back and we say to workers, we're going to give you hazard pay was allowable through the federal government. Hazard pay was allowable coming from Washington, D.C. And now we come back and we say, we really appreciate y'all working EMA. You worked overtime in this ice. We really appreciate all the engineer. You did so many extra things in the ice and coal, but we don't want to spend the money. This is not extra money we're spending. These people would be paid that amount of money anyway. If you take a uh, holiday, you still paying them. If they decide that they sick that day, you still pay. This ain't no extra money that we got to put up for this. They're already working. And then it gets me because our offices, our sales, we many times ain't here. And I'm not speaking for all of them. I know my office be working on Fridays and Saturdays and sometimes Sundays, but you know, I just wanted to have something that we could give to the workers who are also taxpayers. Because a lot of times we talk about the workers and we say, oh, the taxpayers versus the work. The workers actually pay taxes. We take them out of their checks. So I wanted to just clarify that I'm not bringing enthusiasm. I'm not bringing pom-poms. It's a matter of where we think resources and investment should go. I believe investing in the people, I believe that the stadium is owned by the people. And I know in our budget, it says that, I mean, in a, a report, we got to vote on $8 million for Wi-Fi that's going to be coming up. So I wanted to open up the stadium so the people can come in and be a part of that stadium if they got to pay for the $8 million Wi-Fi. Uh, today, I'm saying, hey, what about these workers that, like you said, was working in ice storms and all that? How do we do that? And I think we could do it. I asked the administrator, would this interrupt services? Will this shut everything down? And he had indicated to me it wouldn't. It's not additional money we're putting there. You're going to pay this anyway, whether the worker is there as at work or whether the worker says, I'm going to take the day off. So I just want to be clear. I like one set of rules. This is one of the reasons that people sent me down here. And a lot of times I know we look at, oh, we shutting down a commission. You ain't shutting me down. You shutting down the 200,000 people that sent me here to shake it up and do it different. To do it different. So if we can go with $660,000 for legal fees for the Port Authority who messed up the Millennium Hotel, and we could do it with a blink of an eye, without an argument, without a question, without a fiscal responsibility. It's just a difference of opinion. I believe that the workers, could get a break and be a part of something that hasn't happened in 31 years. So that's why I brought it. It's unfortunate you all don't support it, but I support it. I stand firm on it. I stand firm on this. I stand firm that the watch party would have been great. I stand firm on these issues that are coming from the people. And I just wish issues that came from the people would get as quick, enthusiastic um, responses as when the business community comes in here. We usually, well, we got to stop, we got to go, we got to run, we got to have it. 
less questions. I just want to have the game played, just like on Sunday. The good thing about the Super Bowl, the game will be paid by one set of rules, no matter what uniform you got on. It's one set of rules. And that's what we're trying to do here. I thought this would be great for the workers to get a break. Uh, and um, I still stand with that. So I'd like to be able to vote yes on it. Thank you. Um, and in Hamilton County, we pay for employees to work, not pay for them to not work. If they want to be off, as I said earlier, they can use your, their time to do that. We certainly have shown through our expenditures, um, through the ARP and other funding, uh, the importance of our employees. So uh, I have no doubt that we are putting our employees first and also the people first. So at this point, I would like to ask if there's a motion for by leave three. I move for by, uh, I move for the resolution to allow workers to have the Monday off uh, after the Super Bowl as one of our paid holidays. Is there a second? Hearing none, the motion fails. Thank you, we'll move on. Um, our regular agenda. Uh, Madam President, I'm sorry, there, there's a by leave four that came in. Oh, the, you added this one. Yeah, yes, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is by leave four. This is resolution authorizing the employment of special counsel to provide legal services to the board and county employees. Uh, this relates to legal services uh, related to a, a case filed uh, in Common Police Court, uh, Tracy Hunter against the Board of County Commissioners and, and other uh, persons and employees under uh, under county employment as well. So this uh, just assigns uh, special counsel, the prosecutor has recommended special counsel in this in this particular case, just out of an, a, an abundance of caution, even though the prosecutor is not named in the suit, uh, just out of an abundance of caution to uh, uh, ensure that there is, uh, or they, the prosecutor felt that it was important to have special counsel in this particular case. So that is the resolution uh, that is before you. Uh, uh, it is, again, resolution authorizing the employment of special counsel to provide legal services to the board and county employees. Uh, and this, uh, uh, Roger Friedman is here from the uh, Hamilton County Prosecutor's Office uh, if there is uh, uh, additional questions on this. Thank you. Um, Bailey, for any additional discussion, Vice President Reese. Yes, I wanted to make sure uh, clarity on it, make sure I got it right. Um, so there was a law firm that was secured and paid to represent us. And that law firm, I guess, had to, we had to get, get them off the case because now they are participating in suing us with uh, Rumkey. So they can no longer employees. So we don't pay them to do the work so far. Then they say, well, hey, we represent Rumpke and we're going to sue the county. So now we got to go get somebody else to pay. Is that how it works? Right, sir. That is mostly correct. Yes. The, the so county you did retain. Pull your microphone up just a little so they can hear you. Yeah. Sure. The, uh, the county did retain Kitty Museum and Cleet Camp uh, to represent the board with regard to the suit that was initially filed by Tracy Hunter. Uh, the suit was filed in the Court of Common Pleas. It was transferred to the United States District Court for the Southern District of Ohio. Uh, Keating, Muti, and Klee Camp billed by the hour for their time. So they, they were only paid for the work that they actually did. Uh, they have filed a motion to dismiss the suit. Uh, it's been fully briefed, and they're awaiting a decision from the federal court right now. The suit could be over before the new council ever does any work on this case. Uh, Keating is not putting any more billable hours into it. It's, it's all waiting for the court's decision. But because of the conflict of interest that arose by their representation of Rumpke, we thought it best that they withdraw and that new council be appointed. The attorney we've suggested is, is an attorney who has represented county employees on several other lawsuits, especially in, in 1983 actions. Uh, her name is Linda Weber. She's a very experienced, skillful person. And we believe, you know, that, that to protect the board's interest, we should have special counsel to do it. And we're recommending that the, that the board authorize the retention of Linda Weber and her firm to do that. Gotcha. And so just uh, make sure I understand. So the, the law firm that was representing us on a different, it's a different case, but they were paid to represent us. Now they're actually paid to sue us. 
So we have to get somebody else. I'll basically. presume, I'll presume, <laughs> I'll presume Rumpke's paying them. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Just wanted to make sure you knew what was going on here. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Any Thank other you. questions? Um, Commissioner Drew. No questions. No questions. I think it's great that it makes sense due to conflict of interest and the immediacy of making this decision. So thank you, uh, Jeff, for bringing it forward. So um, I'd like to make a motion. Did you want to say something else? No. OK. I'm laughing. OK. Um, I'd like to make a motion to adopt by Lee Four. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reeves. Yes. Commissioner Dreehouse. Yes. Thank, thank you, you, Commissioners. No further bylaws. Thank you. We'll move on to our regular agenda. Our uh, um, engineer, Mr. Beck. Good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, just one item for you today. We have a resolution authorizing agreement between Amanda and Donald Huff and the Board of County Commissioners uh, required for purchase of property deemed, deemed necessary to uh, for the right and privilege to enter upon their property for the Howard Road resurfacing and culvert replacement project. This is for a standard highway easement and a construction easement in the amount of $500 out of permissive auto. Thank you so much. Any discussion? Hearing none, um, I'd like to make a motion to adopt item one. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reeves. Yes. Commissioner Dreehouse. Yes. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. And I'll see you at the Victory Parade That's Wednesday. True. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. Thanks, sir. Uh -huh. See you later. We have uh, before us some consent agenda items, um, items two through 14. Um, just some of them deal with bridge uh, project budget adjustments. Uh, three replacement vehicles for the engineer's office, and also a uh, resolution approving some collective bargaining agreements, which is always good. It's, it's four of those on our uh, consent agenda. And another one dealing uh, with zoning, and we have two liquor permits um, application. Any uh, discussion as relates to the consent agenda items two through 14? <clears throat> no. Okay. No question. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to approve items two through 14. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Dreehouse. Yes. Thank you. Thank you all. Who day? I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Dreehouse. Yes. Thank you.